Well, here we are again then. Episode 40. I know, I know. Episode 40. Listen, when we started this, we were 20 years younger. <laughs> I tell you what, it feels like 40 years ago when we did start it. And it was only this time, when was it? This time last year. Time last year. Uh, yeah. yeah. When they, oh. when it all started kicking off the first time. And But we know from last week, we are, we're, we're hoping we can see the, the, the change, the, uh, the growth is occurring. We're going to get out of this thing. We're going to get out of this thing. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. I think a little bit, isn't it? Uh, it is. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed, I'm sure, uh, the fabulous posts uh, from me and him over there um, about, are you ready? Are you ready are for you your ready? roadmap? Uh, we talked about it last night. So we've got a fantastic tool um, that I'd encourage you all to uh, go and download called our customer readiness checker uh, that Rich will talk a little bit about in a minute in terms of uh, what it does. Um, but the the bigger point, what we want to talk about today, once Rich has told you what it is, is um, what you do when you've got your result. What should you be doing and thinking about? So, so what's the readiness checker then, mm -hmm. Mr. Knight? So the re readiness checker or the customer customer ready report um, will provide businesses with insight into where they are in terms of their customer readiness. We have four zones of customer readiness when it comes to customer experience and they range from those who, excuse my French, don't give a damn about their customers to those who actually have the customer completely and utterly within the heart of what they do and they only change things that according to their business based on what the customer is requiring and what the customer needs um, so there is a there's a range there's four there's four zones now this 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 tool that we provide is it's it's free it's it's free aren't we lovely yes i know you're saying what a marvelous thing for you guys to do but we feel it's really important for people to understand where they are as we move out of lockdown and to be able to understand that they might be in a great place according to their own perception of their business, but also there may be opportunity to tweak a few things and make it even better experience for their customers who are therefore going to spend more with them, stay around longer and tell more people how great you are. So it's a bit of a win situation for everybody involved, really. So the four zones of readiness are your at risk zone. Those are the people who really are not focusing at all on customers. They've got a business set up and this is understandable to a certain degree because you're really busy. You've got to get on with stuff. You're worried about where the business is coming from, ordering up stock, making sure stuff are OK and all of those things that really do matter within a business, but actually are based on your internal view of the world and not your external view of the world. So that's your at risk zone. If you carry on doing that, it might be a bit controversial to say is you probably are not going to be too long for this world from a business point of view because you can't afford not to understand what's going on out there because other people are and they'll they'll grow and you will either remain static or decline. So that's the at-risk zone. We've then got um, the next zone that, that comes in there, which is the awareness zone. So those are a lot of organisations. This is the majority of people who take this uh, or, or get this report are actually reporting that they're in the awareness zone. These are people who understand that they've got to ask what is going on from their customer's point of view. They've got to look outside of their own processes, understand what their processes mean and their behavior means to their customers and how they need to adjust it to fit the customer needs and requirements. So they've understood they're going to do that. And they might put a survey out once a year, a couple of times a year. They might chat to their customers and they might do those, those sort of things and, and think that actually we need to consider how easy it is to get onto our website. Those are the sort of things that people are starting to think about, but there's room for movement. So, so those are the two zones we're going to talk about in a bit more depth in a bit more depth in a minute, aren't we? In terms of kind of businesses that might find yeah. themselves in that in that perspective, and then um, next week uh, we're going to talk about businesses that are either in the breakthrough zone or in the in the impact zone. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, we'll, we'll very briefly the breakthrough zone is all about uh, businesses Ooh. that really understand customers that's it don't spoil uh, it too much because it'd be exciting for everybody to understand exactly uh, and then the impact zone is uh, really customer-centered businesses they yeah. they drive their strategy through customers so um i think the important thing just to say here uh before we move on is 
it, 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 it you know this is the 40th pod, podcast we've done um and I, often listeners viewers rich and i kind of have a little think about what we're going to talk about next week and you know what would add value and which amazing guests are we going to get on to talk about their specialized subject um and, and what what we'd really like to know from you guys is what you know we're getting into quite we're going to get into quite a bit of detail a bit of technical stuff today but we'd like to really know what you'd like us to talk about so if you get the opportunity in the comments or you know personal messages on linkedin tell us what you'd like these all warblers to talk about because we may well then get in contact with you because we are going to do a live live reader and see act on the 25th of march uh thursday evening uh seven o'clock which yeah, seven o'clock. We're going to invite people to come on. It's going to be a Facebook live, but we'll get the old link up here on LinkedIn and all over the place. And you can pop in and say hello. Bring along a little tipple of, of your own uh, de desire. You know, we, we'll be going for a cider, but you can go for whatever you want. And yeah, we, we'd love to be able to have a chat with some people who come up with some things we'd like to talk about, because uh, we think that would uh, be really useful in the moment. Understand what are the key things, the issues um, the areas of concern or, or just areas of discussion that you, you would like to bring to the fore in terms of customer experience. Um, and, and you guys out there listening to us, you're, you're the ones in it, like we are. Yeah, you know what's going on and the things that we really need to be focusing on. So, you know, having having that information from you, be remiss of us not to ask our listeners and, uh, and viewers, um, you know, so uh, yeah, let us know. It'd be really, really interesting. And then 25th of March, seven o'clock. And it, it would be good as well. I mean, you know, if you're a business, once you heard what we talked about today, that you think you're in the risk zone, you know, come on to Cider and CX and talk, talk to us about that so we, we can give you some practical advice and some help. So, um, Rich, I'm going to talk about the risk zone and I'm going to hand back to you to talk about the awareness zone. Yeah. Um, almost as if we rehearsed this. Um, mm. I, I just want to, I want to talk about um, some, some examples of businesses that, um, You've, you, many of the listeners will have heard heard us talk about the the CX pendulum before, and businesses that are behind the pendulum, and they're very reactive, and uh, they, they they find it really hard to keep up. They don't they don't understand customer sentiment. They don't check in with their clients, um, as, as you said. Um, and you know, one of the key you might be sat there listening and saying, "Well, how do I know if I'm in the, the 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 risks are?" Well, the first thing to do is download the report, and that will tell you, of course. Mm -hmm. Really simple to do. Twelve simple questions, but. But if you don't have a chance to download the report um, and this this is you, don't worry. OK, there's lots of ways we can help you move out of the risk zone. OK, businesses that, are, that are inherently fall into the, the risk zone um, are those that maybe have a lot of complaints. They might be living, you know, day to day in terms of reacting to customer buying habits. They might be. Um, they might have really intermittent cash flow because they're, you know, they're reacting and, you know, they, they have a good day and they do really, really well and they're on it with the customers. But the next day, there's no real strategy. OK. Um, and there is, you know, there's, there's the defined lack of insight um, hmm. in terms of the, the, the business doesn't really, you know, it runs on the operation. It maybe runs on, you know, some, some reasonable cash flow. But actually, there's no, to, to, uh, to Richard's point he made earlier, you know, if you don't have a, a defined CX strategy, the reality is you could find yourself in a situation where um, you're so far away from what your customers want that they stop buying from you. And some uh, some examples of this uh, have have come to light during the pandemic. Um, we've mentioned them before, um, but they're they're really good examples. So people like um, businesses like Debenhams, businesses like the Arcadia Group. Uh, which 10 years ago were, were were titans of the high street they were worth billions you know 10 billion 20 billion quid lots of money um but but they were at, they were in the risk zone and they were in the risk zone because they were not uh reacting to customer trends they weren't using the right customer insight to change their model more quickly enough and and that model was all about online that model was all about convenience about on the channel um and you know they, they just didn't move and seek to understand what their customers wanted so hence 10 years later you could argue had the pandemic not happened they may have struggled on for a few you know maybe four or five years more quite possibly um but the reality is the pandemic has probably put them out of their uh, metaphorical misery 
um, early. Now, yeah. what I don't want to trivialise here um, yeah. is the, the impact that that's had on town centres and yeah. most importantly, the impact that's had on people's jobs <clears> because, <throat> you know, there are some very talented people that work for those organisations. So just to be really, really clear, I feel, feel uh, we feel sad about the fact that these businesses no longer exist, but they are a great example of businesses that have lived in the risk zone for a number of years now. Yeah. But what about the awareness zone? Rich, what's well, the yeah, as it suggests from the title, it is that idea that actually, hang on, things are moving on and we need to keep up with that. That's pretty much it. It, it is having that idea that the people are looking forward. You mentioned reactionary organisations there. Oh, something's happened. Now we change. Well, as we're moving into the awareness zone, the businesses that are actually thinking, well, actually, do you know what? We're going to have to start thinking about this and looking forward. We might not know the answers yet. And actually, we haven't got masses amounts of data or insight, but we're going to start gathering that and aligning it to the strategies that we have in the business. So we all know that we should be as good business owners and leaders being right. Where do we want to get to in five, 10 years time? Break, come back and then break it into small actions and do all of that lovely business planning piece. But unless we have the insight from the 360 view of the business and the business sector we, 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 we inhabit, then we, we, we're never going to be particularly focused or successful in moving that, that, that sort of planning forward and, and turning it into reality. So those guys in the awareness zone are the ones, and I mentioned this earlier, they're the ones who are asking some, some, um, for some feedback. Now, a lot of organisations exi exist in that awareness zone, yet they never move beyond it. So it is the idea, and you know, we work with a number of professional services organisations. We've got a lot of data around that. And in fact, um, around education as well. There's lots of organisations who will sit there and go, yeah, we, we gain insight. When? Well, you know, at the end of something, the end of the year or the end of a project, we'll ask, oh, is everything OK? And by the way, can you pay him a bill? You know, yeah, absolutely. They're gathering it and they, they have awareness that they should be doing this. Now, the other thing with those businesses is that they have what is called an insight, uh, a, a customer insight bucket, and it sits next to lots of people's desks. And as any data comes in, they look at the data and they go, oh, that's interesting. And they put it immediately into this big bucket and never do anything with it. So although they have awareness that they should be seeking understanding and insight, it's what do you then do with it? And that's one of the critical things with customer experience is that, yes, we can all gather data. We can all look for stuff. But so what? What then? Where do you go next? So you may find that that's actually resonating with you if you're listening or watching us today is, yeah, we do that. We do ask for, for bits of information. and We do make tweaks, but we, we're not really sure what that means or how it's going to impact our future planning. So that's the awareness piece. And as I say, the majority of people who complete the customer ready report are in that zone. How do you push yourself that a little bit further so that you're into that breakthrough zone and actually pushing yourself ahead of your competitors? Because this isn't about just saying, well, I'm I'm better than they are. It's actually, no, no, we're doing something that's great for our customers. Then you will become better than your competitors because it's focused on your customers. So that's a, that's our awareness zone. Um, in terms of that side of things. And you probably know lots of businesses out there who are in that zone. Go on. Who do you think? <laughs> so uh, let me think. We've got, um, well, the, like, the likes of um, uh, some of the supermarkets, actually, uh, the smaller ones, uh, they're, 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 they're definitely asking and requiring that information, that feedback. How much I'm seeing in terms of what they're doing with the data is another matter. Um, and even something like Tesco's, yeah, they're gathering lots of data and information and they are they are sending me something that will be very suggestive of what I need. But it, is that cus really customer centric or is that actually influencing me in a strange sort of dark arts manner? You know, we're, we're gathering data and we are using it, but it's actually for our own ends and not for the customer's ends at the end of the day. Some people might say, well, actually, it is they're doing all these sort of things. But I, I see those supermarkets have having done that and they are in an awareness zone, but then they're not really pushing the boundaries anymore. It's yeah, so I think Tesco are a good example, aren't they? Because I, I would probably be a little bit softer. I think they are in that breakthrough zone Ooh. place because if you look at if you look at Tesco, they lost their way. They absolutely lost their way mm. about two years ago, didn't they? Um, 
and, and their profits took it and they sat on the laurels and they were de they definitely moved back into that sort of awareness stroke risk zone and I think if you think about uh, a lot of the good leaders that, that that Tesco lost at the time as well they lost a lot of expertise but it's quite interesting now you know you look at how they performed throughout the pandemic and you know they were they were really quick to respond to the online delivery they you know remember the headline they've you know recruited a thousand more vans or whatever it was um so they're an interesting business but you know the other thing i think is interesting about all of this is if you're struggling with am i in the risk zone am i in the way where am i don't overcomplicate it if you are reacting to trend if you are having to constantly think oh, i've got another customer complaint how do i deal with that or there's an operation issue that's stopping you spending time with your customers there is a chance that you may be in that risk zone okay um, if you're in the breakthrough zone, you've got processes and procedures set up. You know, you're getting that customer feedback. You are awareness zone or breakthrough sorry, zone. Sorry, awareness zone rather. Yeah, awareness um, zone. You're getting that customer feedback. You, you know, it, it, irregularly, but you're getting mm. it. You're looking at, you know, the customer is important. You, but you're probably a little bit passive to it. So, um, mm. you know, that's how I would how I would describe. If you're thinking, you know, what's the straw test, Rich and Rye? Well, it's this. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, if you come on to um, the uh, Cider and CX live um, feed, we'll spend a bit more time sort of going into a bit more detail in terms of what you can do to really help yourself get out of that um, and move move to, the, move to the next level. But next week, as Richard mentioned, uh, or as I think I mentioned, actually, we're going to talk about the next two zones. Um, yes. Breakthrough and impact. Oh, that's exciting. I'm looking forward yes. to discussing that with you, uh, my, my, good, uh, my good friend and colleague. Yeah, so that'll be next week. That'll be episode 41 next Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk more. We'll talk more about exciting uh, Cider and CX. And we shall be reminding you about the Customer Ready Report. The link is available under here now. And we'll put it in the comments as well. On those sort of things and um they mustn't forget to like comment and share that's what you say isn't it yeah so do that mm -hmm. that'd be really nice um and to tell people pop on listen to us have a good old warble and uh we'll see you next week no doubt i've been richard knight and i've been ryan Hustable. have a great week guys <laughs>